February 22nd at 6 o'clock. This meeting will be conducted by a remote video and teleconference pursuant to 1MRSA Section 403B, 2D, and Section 6 of the Stanford City Council Rules of Procedure as amended and adopted August 3rd, 2021, reflecting recent recommendations of the U.S. CDC and adoption by the State of Maine CDC pertaining to the conduct of meetings indoors in the public space. Members of the public may join the meeting by phone by dialing 1929-205-6099 using meeting ID 872-0217-4368 and password 967-117 or via computer at the link provided on the city's website. This is a work session of the Stanford City Council and not a business meeting of the City Council. Meeting is open to the public but is not a public hearing. The chairperson shall conduct the work session with the committee members and may elect to call upon the public in attendance to read the questions or to obtain input and information. All work products will be developed by consensus and forwarded as advisory to the full council for any matter warranting legislative action by the city council at a business meeting so posted and assembled 22-66-01 communications workshop. And the first item on the agenda is communications coordinator last three months in review. So Jordan, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Okay, perfect. Can you see me? I cannot hear you really well. We can't see your screen. There we go, Jordan. Okay. I think Jordan's frozen. Yeah, I'm not hearing anything, Jordan. I think Jordan, you may have you may have to uh, log back in, and there she goes. <clears throat> have to use the phone connection. Icky night out there tonight. Yeah, it's a little damp out. <laughs> did we also lose Bob? Oh, we did. Oh my gosh, I don't we did. See him, so we might have. He was there earlier. And just so everyone knows, I'm pretty much planning that this is just going to be a, a council workshop. In term, I'm not going to, it's just, we'll ask questions, do what we need to do, and, and that will be the extent of, of who participates this evening. Okay, am I back now? We're good. Yes. You are back. back. Yes. Okay. I'm missing Councilor Stackpole, but you can go ahead. He'll get okay. back in. Let me make sure that. We lost her again. Okay. Um, let's see. Sorry, I my computer got all messed up when everything went out. All right. So when I started about three months ago, Steve handed me a lost um, kind of deep. Is anybody having difficulty hearing her or is it just my internet? Yeah, um, I'm not able to. She's usually breaking up. She keeps freezing also. Do I keep breaking up? Is this my end? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's your end, Jordan. Um, can you dial in, using your, dial in using your phone and or I can put the, uh, I can put your PowerPoint up and, and you can tell me when to move it and such under that. Yeah, sorry, I've been having problems with Atlantic, but I thought it was all figured out. Um, I know I had sent it, the my final one to Marissa, so Marissa should yep. have that. Yep, she has it. Okay, awesome. All right, you can scroll down to the first slide. All right. So when I started on my first day about three months ago, Steve presented me with a four page document that kind of laid out my position and perspective projects to jump into 
but I didn't have a real plan on how to tackle the many communications deficiencies. But being a resident of Stanford, I can tell that many of our residents go to Facebook to find out information about the city, specifically Stanford Springville the Happening and Stanford Springville the Page. Because information is wasn't being posted onto our Facebook or it wasn't being listed on the website or it couldn't be easily found on the website. And we all know that posts on these pages have a tendency to spiral. Specifically when they pertain to the city, it seems like you can very quickly jump up the number of comments. So my goal was to kind of revamp and reutilize the city's Facebook page to create a factual and more relevant feed for our residents with up-to-date information and um, news pertaining to the city. And in the future, my goal is to drive traffic from our Facebook to our website. But as we all know, our website is severely lacking. So that has not been a main focus. Um, and on Facebook, I have made an effort to conduct some education campaigns specifically pertaining to pay as you throw and yes. recycling or um, the new fire station. So I've had eight posts done or I've posted eight posts about pay as you throw and about four posts for in January for firefighter cancer awareness month and connecting that back to the reason why we need a new fire station. And I would consider these to be fairly successful because I peruse the um, happening in the page and I've seen comments or discussion threads about these specific issues. And I've actually seen people either comment our specific infographics or tag people on the information on our page. So this information is getting out there, but I just not as readily available. Or I don't think everyone knows where to find it. So ideally, it would be nice if the city councilors could follow the city page and share the city's Facebook content, as well as ask slash drive their followers to the city page. Um, on December 1st, Councilor Hanselman shared a post on her city councilor Facebook, um, asking her followers to follow the city page. And six days later, we had 60 new followers. <clears throat> so that's our biggest weekly jump. And we did have a fairly popular post that week, so I'm not saying it all came from that specific post from Councilor Hanselman, but it definitely did drive some of that traffic over there. And then some of my other work has included job posting assistance. So I've worked with Stacy and HR on better ways of posting some of our job positions um, and just new avenues that we can do that. So I've helped with posting the assistant planner, city planner job, a bunch of the jobs for public works. And now I'm starting to help her post for the positions for the summer camp and summer event. <clears throat> I've also been working on new branding for the city and this was kind of handed off to me. Um, I'm finishing the rebranding that begins with Tim Beats and just trying to kind of finalize his image for something that will work for us now. And the last one has probably been, I would maybe say the most time consuming of really understanding what the city does. I they don't really teach you in school how a municipal government works. And so I lack that information and I think that a lot of our residents lack that information too and so sitting in with sitting in on the subcommittee meetings and just meeting more of their department down and kind of asking what might be questions but they're just questions that people don't know so that I can have a better understanding of how to grasp in language and understand and you can scroll down to the next slide, Steve. So there, these are some social insights from our Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And I took the initial numbers on when I started around November 15th. So our followers on Facebook have increased by 212. And in that time, I've posted over 100 new posts on Facebook. Um, we've also had a 200 a 91% increase in page visits. I'm not sure when they captured the before number, but this has been from, like I said, November 15th to do 22. And our page reach is about 45,000. And so page reach is different than impressions. Page reach is just people that see your content or see your posts, your ads, your stories. And this comes from 
our posts, but also people resharing our posts. And like I said, I focus most of my attention on Facebook and just trying to establish a newer Facebook feed. And then I move over to Instagram as a better, I don't want to say fluff, but just as a way to better market some of the prettier aspects of Stanford. I don't think that our residents are going to Stan- or going to Instagram to get their information about the town. So I try to highlight some of the more nature side of Stanford. And so on Instagram, we have increased our followers by, f- or by 53. And I've only had about 13 posts. Like I said, I haven't focused a lot of attention on Instagram yet. But that being said, our page visits have increased by 75.8%. And our page reach has increased by 201%. And in my process of trying to find ways to post positions such as the assistant city planner that you wouldn't necessarily post on Facebook. I've looked at LinkedIn and trying to establish a LinkedIn for the city so that people kind of, we can have that economic development and have those more professional jobs in Sanford. So our LinkedIn is my relatively newer venture. And so we've only increased LinkedIn followers by eight. We have seven new posts and we have increased our page views by 18%. All right, and then you can go to the next one, Steve. And this is just a snapshot of some of our most popular posts on Facebook and kind of the reach that they are getting so we can actually see like what people like. And I think that this, these posts highlight, they like the human interest stories or just the cool kind of facts like, oh, the, the Stanford Regional Airport is the busiest airport in Maine or that our fire department is hiring graduates of SRTC. And then the um, fourth most popular one was the new parks and rec director. So I think that it's all about kind of humanizing the city and showing these different aspects that people don't really think of when they think of Stanford. So if you want to go to the next one, Steve. This is um, kind of what has been put in the media from stuff that I have posted, or I would assume, from what I've posted. So the fire department post, I highlighted, like I said, that the Stanford Fire Department had hired four new graduate or four graduates from SRTC. And this post had about a reach of 8,000 and we had about 800 post engagements. And that includes 415 reactions and 29 shares. And so then the story was picked up by WGME and they had shared, they had created a little article and a video to go along with it. And then I had shared, like I said, the fact that our airport is the busiest airport in the state of Maine. <clears throat> and this post had a reach of 19,000 and 2,500 um, engagements. And overall, there was about 575 reactions. And so then this post was picked up by the Bangor Daily News. And then the next one is obviously me. Um, so Sean Sullivan had reached out to me to do an interview for the Portsmouth Herald. And getting more positive in, or stories about Stanford in the news um, on my next set of to-dos, like past what I'm kind of doing right now, because I think that we can get into this a little bit later, is that the PR and having these positive stories, it just helps kind of change people's image slowly, but surely. I think that seeing this positive stuff about us is actually really impactful. So that's one of my overall goals is to kind of get more stories about us in the media. All right, Steve, you can go to the next slide. So going back to that four page document, a city communication strategy was listed as a project to do. However, I don't think that I had enough data or enough information on Stanford residents to create a specific and targeted approach to how we should communicate. Um, But I think we have a diverse set of residents that have different needs and have different wants and have different access to technology or whatever it may be. So to create a more targeted approach, I um, am creating an called the In the Know Community Information Survey. And the goal of this survey is to uncover where residents get their information now and where they would like to get it in the future and what information they would like to receive from the city. So the survey is going to be posted on our Facebook and on the website, and we're still creating a paper survey distribution plan. And um, it should be linked to the survey, Steve, if you click the underline. 
section. And this is just a little preview of the survey so far. It's about 20 questions. It's not live yet. Like I said, I want to be prepared with what we're going to do with the paper version before we put it out. Um, so Steve, if you want, you can scroll down and we can look at the questions. So the first nine or 10 are demographic questions, just so that we can kind of splice the data and see where do people that are age 35 to 44 want to get their information and how is that different than our residents that are over 65? Or is there a difference based on income? Just small things like that that can help us kind of understand our residents more as a demographic. Uh, hit next from here, Jordan. Yep. And then next, we'll kind of get into those questions, like I said, that are pertaining to where do residents get the information now and where are they looking to get it in the future? And kind of jumping ahead a little bit, I know that one of the city council's goals or thoughts was to gauge overall satisfaction in this if done yearly, I envision that the survey could kind of help measure some of that satisfaction and we could tweak the questions going forward. But this is just to get an overall base level of where are residents right now when I'm fairly new in the position. So I might I envision doing it yearly, but it can change too. One of the things that uh, Larissa and Jordan and I have talked about is the best way to get the paper distribution of this particular survey because we we have such a wide demographic that we're trying to reach. You know, I refer to them as the memes and the papes that uh, get their newspaper and the newspapers you know, come and gone and we've got a new version now and a lot of that is electronic and um, I know like my 86-year-old mother walks to the mailbox at 5 o'clock in the morning in all weather conditions, much to my chagrin, uh, to get that newspaper because she won't give that up, right? Uh, so we, we, we need to know how to reach them. So if timing was a little different, we could easily take the survey and put it in with the tax bills. Or we may talk to you about reissuing this survey or something similar to or different from along with the um, – what changed year over year in the tax bills this year. Uh, we're working our way towards having that kind of a communications piece because the majority of our residents that are voters, they get that tax bill. We have a great opportunity to, at a, a relatively low cost to put that information in with the tax bill. I don't, sorry, I don't know if it's a good time to share just a thought on reaching that demographic or you want me to save it till later? No, go ahead, Ann. Um, so when we did the school naming survey, which we're trying to reach out as broadly as possible, we had really good traction uh, working directly with uh, his Robin at um, the Trapsy Center to reach a certain amount of our retired community. And she actually went through the survey with folks on the phone and filled it out online as well as collected paper copies. And then another uh, opportunity is to actually partner with Sanford Housing Authority um, because they, of course, have their senior population and um, Potentially another option would be our officer who I'm drawing a blank on that uh, does the senior visits on a regular basis as part of the um, kind of community policing concept. So anyway, just a couple of thoughts and I'd be happy to chat more with Jordan if she wants. Thank you. Thank you for those. I hadn't even thought those hadn't really even crossed my mind. So thank you. Could I ask what we're going to use this, like how often are we going to use this survey? Is that just going out to everyone? Yep, so the goal of this survey is to then make a more informed and targeted approach to how we handle city communications, because right now we just don't really have an idea of where our residents, more where most residents are getting their information or where they want to get that information. And so, like I said, I, I could envision this being done every year and we could tweak some of the questions to get some result or more results back on the satisfaction of certain things. But right now, this is just strictly focused on where are you right now getting your information and where would you hope to get it in the future? 
I found the um, question 12 a little difficult to handle because of you had to rank order everything and stuff would come in and out. It, it'd be blank. And um, if you put two, 12, two tens or, or whatever, and I found that a little confusing, that question, that was a difficult one to actually play around with the had to put them in a rank Actually, order. Actually, Becky, Too many. By, accident, I, by accident, I figured out all you have to do is like click on them and they just move around. It was wicked easy. Yeah, I knew how to click on them, but rank ordering them, I think if I had... Oh, you mean actually the order? If I somebody asked what, what my top rec three, was. if you asked what... I didn't what know we, what my rec was. What's that? So that's a new program, or not a new program, but it's a program that the and recreation uses to um, disperse their information. And so that's just to kind of see where, if people know about my rec and if like parents and those that are more interested in the rec programs get their information there. I never had ever even heard of it. And it's something that we're using. Yep, so the, the city's used it for quite a number of years. Um, um, Alan Grady, when he was here, was very adept at utilizing it. Okay. Prior to that, uh, the rec department really had used it for uh, incoming receding for, for programs, park rentals, and such into that. So there's an amazing contact base in there. So they have a parent database in there. They send communications out about pro various programmings and, and such into that. So it, it, it's similar to the database that the school has for parents, uh, you know, that have obviously have children in the school system. So, um, and Brady Lloyd, our current director, is very adept at this and has worked with MyRec for a period of time. In fact, uh, two of his colleagues have gone to work for MyRec, so he's very adept at its utilization. Do you think the best thing here potentially is um, just to ask people what their top three are? For me, that would have been a lot simpler and easier. I don't like to spend a whole lot of time on a survey because I seem to be surveyed a lot. Um, so I found this a little tedious. I want to get in, get out. And mm -hmm. this stopped and I almost just turned it off at this point. Um, I'll just, I'll reiterate. I was, I was trying to do this in the middle of my office stuff and I, I got to this and I'm like, eh. And I was like, I'll finish it later. <laughs> That's what I did. So. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go down to uh, some of the if other I, questions. If I just play yeah. around. That was the only one, though, wasn't it, Maura? That was um, really bothersome. Yes, I mean, it, it, it's better to, I would just pr rather pick my, what are my top three? Because that's, I could easily have just picked three. You could have looked at them all and said, eh, I prefer this over this, and I didn't need to rank them all. Yeah, same with me. Okay, so the survey has been designed so that we can filter that down um, in, in, uh, in comparison to demographics, renter, resident, uh, work here, don't work here, all of those type of elements. Uh, and then drill that down on where they're getting their information from, uh, from currently, where they'd like to get their information from in the future, and what information uh, that they're looking for. They may, they may be getting some of that now, but not all. So it, the survey aims to get to the heart of those particular questions. And then only at the end you have the three open-ended questions that allows for a, a greater depth, uh, but we have less of the ability to filter it at that point in time. So. I didn't go all the way to submit the survey, um, but is it correct that there are, are there any required questions or can I submit the survey and having skipped a couple of the questions? I don't think I required any of the questions because I figured kind of as we had said earlier that some people might not be apt to answer the whole thing if every question is required. And I'm sure that there will be um, unanswered questions or some unanswered surveys or ones that are kind of outliers, but I didn't require them. I think it was a great survey otherwise, I really do. 
except for that one <laughs> section. Yeah, like I'll it. definitely look at that. I agree. And I had, had thought that, but just how the question, like how Survey Monkey, they have it set up, yeah. you had to answer all of them. But I'll definitely like workshop that and see how we can fix that. Okay. Okay. And so then the next thing that I have been working on, as we all know, is the website. And as we all know, our website is severely lacking in many categories, but I'm excited that we're going to revise and we will have a fully custom and unique website. Um, I've attached some sites with a similar scope to ours and a design overall kind of feel that I hope that we could achieve or kind of emulate something similar to. I think these are more clean and modern sites that have a fresher feel that will last a little bit longer. Um, so feel free to poke around now or later and kind of tell me what you all like and you don't like, because this is a collaborative process. I haven't even scheduled the first meeting with them. So it is in the initial stages of it and we have time to really workshop and get something that we like and that we're proud of. Um, so we can click the order and go through them now or later. Could you um, like, just so that we, we, I don't, I mean, we can talk about this tonight, but um, I just wondered if there was something that you could send out to, to us through our city council email that could solicit that feedback in a more um, scribed way. Like it just, even if it was just a short, just, because I don't know that everybody will share all, mm -hmm. I mean, just the kinds of things that are important. And I just thought it might be um, better to, um, rather than have a, I don't think we need a meeting or anything like that. I just okay. would like to have some kind of way for us to all have an opportunity to respond. People may choose not to, but that way we can do our research on our own, take a look at it, and then get back to you with the kinds of things that you think that we have the ability to have some influence in. Yeah, definitely. And I have more websites too. I have about nine or 10 that are in a similar scope. So I can send those to everyone. And then I'll send you some things too that I specifically like so that you can keep an eye out for them and let me know what you all think about them. Mm -hmm. but, well, we um, should that's definitely, we should definitely try to, you know, like look for things, like think about mm -hmm. if it was like, what we, if we were just a citizen trying to find out some information and see how easy yep. it is to find Yep, I'll definitely give you um, all a list of something to look out for and differences and see kind of what you all think about it because I have some ideas of things that I like, but I'd like to see also where everyone is kind of situated. Um, and I know that we had mentioned at the last meeting some testimonials. So if you want to go to the next slide, Steve. I reached out to four of Revise's current customers. I had heard back from one. Um, and this is John Nalbone, Nalboni. He works for Robinson Township in New Jersey. And you can all read this on your own. It's fairly long. But I felt after reading this, he this was his first project um, in Robinson. And I kind of filled him in on what we, a little bit on our backstory. And it seemed like it was kind of a similar situation over there. And so kind of reading this, it really put me at ease. So I hopefully... It will do the same for you all. So just just on that last little bit there, um, what do they have for how do they handle backups for the page? Is that something that they offer? The companies that we're going the company we're going to go with yeah um what do you mean backup sorry oh delete the um, entire page well you know um I'm not sure who who exactly wrote this but um the website do they do they back that website up somewhere else or is that the only server that it's on um is that anything you guys got into um i'm I don't know that I feel I think that IS had asked them those questions and the considerations to IS. But that being said, 
I do know you can save different versions of the website. So even if we did delete a page, I'm sure it wouldn't, we could find a version that had that page or it took them a few hours to recover it for them. Um, but like I said, I think that IS had handled that question. I didn't get into that for them. Okay. Okay. Um, does anyone have any other questions about the website besides, um, I mean, most of them can be handled or we can talk about later when we, everyone has their feedback, but any questions for right now? I'm excited about the fact that we're getting one. Yeah, I know me too. <laughs> <laughs> I want this to I was, like pressure, Jordan, but what, roughly what's our time frame on actually being able to start seeing, you know, to see a draft before it's published and or having it go live? What's our timeline? So going live, they it should take about four months for everything. I think that in about the design will take the longest because it is fully custom. I think the design takes I want to say about ten weeks. I can have a timeline and I'll attach the timeline um, when I give you guys the websites to look for, and I'll also reach out to them to see if we can have a more kind of targeted and specific one towards us now that we have decided to go with them. You know, four months sounds great, though. That's exciting. Yeah, that is. It's great. Um, and then speaking of, I think I had forgot to mention this when I talked about the rebranding. So my thought for the rebranding is to kind of go live with the rebranding in collaboration or in unison with the website. So it's kind of one big change all at once and not us trying to update the logo on our, new, on our old website and then because I just don't, I'm trying not to add too much to the website that we have right now, but I don't want to go through the process, the process of rebranding with the logo that we have if we're only going to change it not that long after. So I kind of thought I should do them in unison together. All right. And then Steve, if you want to change. So I would like, obviously, this kind of section is the workshop section to kind of discuss how we can work together to achieve the city council goals and what the city council envisions my role in this process. And so I had looked at the goal setting seat and Larissa had kind of, and I had picked out and see where we felt that I best fit in and also some of the notes it did say revamp with the communications coordinator. So obviously I think community image is a place that I fit in well. Um, and like I said, after reading the goals, it said that we needed to revamp. So I kind of wanted to see where everyone was at in this regard. And I'll pre-emphasize this with most of my efforts. to get that information out to our residents. So we haven't really had a chance to focus on the more external side. And I know that one of the things is a marketing campaign, which I would love to do, but I haven't really taken any time to look at that because that seems like a thing that could be kind of accomplished down the road and there was more pressing issues right now. But that being said, I would love to kind of hear your opinion on where you see this going. Um, Jordan, can I just say that I actually think that we really need to get the website up and running because yeah. that it would be, it's like honestly to try to market ourselves with an old website just seems like running uphill. I definitely yeah. agree. And but that has you... been good. I was gonna say that has been to my emphasis with Facebook is that I if we had a good website, I would be trying to drive people to find this information on Facebook or on our website from Facebook. But I just haven't made an effort to drive that much to our website because I a lot of people you talk to around town like no one just knows how to use our Facebook it's hard or our website it's hard to find the information just people don't go to it so I'd rather not I just don't think it markets us as effectively as it should. Maura, what did you want to say? Um, no, I think I, I agree with what you're saying, Anne Marie. But I mean, prepping for when the website's live with some marketing uh, like opportunities 
to jump to jump you know kind of jump right off the live revealing isn't a bad idea either if, if that's where she's wondering about how her time gets focused like even since a couple simple things so you, you well, were we're saying gonna... like oh, go ahead, um, sorry um so you're saying you know maybe put a few posts out there on some of the facebook pages saying hey we're re we're revamping the the sanford city website um coming soon or something like that and then obviously some of the more important stuff we can put up closer out yeah uh, I mean, I was, uh, we were at a meeting today and we were talking about the street renaming process. You know, there's going to be so much that comes up about how do we help our residents on the, on our website. I know she's going to be buried just in that stuff. Um, but also at the same time, you, you push up the branding and, you know, how do you make sure that there's something, you want to make sure that there is something that, that markets us from the get-go on the web, website, not just the website, I guess. Anyway. I'm, not, I'm, I'm yeah i'm just i'm not sure if that's answered the question for the comment <sighs> i guess i i look at the whole thing as everything that we do and everything that we post and the way that we do it we are marketing stanford every single day mm -hmm. and i guess i think that that's how i would look at it is that everything we do and that includes us what we do as a council what our employees do out there we are marketing stanford so I guess if that does that help answer your question about what we see your role as that it that it is important what's out there because that's how people are going to judge us. Yes, I definitely agree, and I think that that everyone that yes, pretty much we all are communicators for the city, and it really matters with how we kind of craft the message that we are putting out there. Because I definitely think too, like being city councilors, people know who you are, so they're going to come to you for information whether like it could just be something small so i think that to that kind of goes back to the communication strategy and the whole need for the survey is that we need to effectively figure out what our communication strategy is and then that will help us be better communicators for the city going forward i would and i would like to figure out a way that we could our city council page could be a city council page rather than a city councilor's and, and, and that doesn't mean that they couldn't have them, but there should be an official city council page that at some point we figure out how to post. That's where the city council meeting also goes. It can be on the regular page, but often people are gonna look for stuff like that. And that's when they have a, a question. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll be honest, I used to have a mayor's page. I took it down because there was just a lot of nasty stuff on there. And you can't, when it's a public page like that, I couldn't take off the bad stuff. All the comments i couldn't do that as an individual but i think we can um have a city a city page and a city council page i just think that people look for that stuff much as i don't like social media i realize it's a fact of life so i personally I hate that people important. get most of their information in. i mean honestly i don't think a lot of the information on there is, is true or correct and I think through that is the like important part is that people want to see the city council, I feel like a little bit separate from the city and they want to see that, okay, we elected you and this is what you are doing for us. It's kind of how I envision it. And so I was did do some poking around earlier and I did notice a few, maybe bigger cities did have like a city council Instagram and a city council Facebook page, but I can definitely dig deeper into that and see how we could do something like that. Cause I imagine that would be, beneficial to have people see this is what the city council does and i think too it kind of goes back to people not fully knowing how city council and a mayor and a city manager how all of that works and what the difference between the three of them are and so i think like having a separate page to kind of highlight the difference between them and what our city council responsibilities and what our city responsibilities one of the one of the big things that uh, we've talked about internally that that relates to to the city council is we've seen some of the best responses on the more human interest stories that that Jordan has pushed out there and we, we were trying to build community and a sense of community around those communications uh, so that we can steer steer people and gain, and gain more viewership 
using those communications so that when it comes to the point of, I'll call it, you know, feeding them the, the more dry material, the, the strictly informational material, that they'll take it from us because they've, they've, they're in this community now. They've formed a habit of looking for information in these locations that the survey will help us identify better. And so they'll take, they'll take the good and the bad, right? They'll take the, the dry stuff that someone like myself might push out there using Jordan uh, because they, they really like seeing the good stuff, the more human interest, and the positive things that are working out there. So. You just can't push any spreadsheets out, Steve, because that does not go well. I'm just going to keep personal experience. I, I can send them to Jordan, though. I think you should always be edited by Jordan. <laughs> Saying. <laughs> And I, on that note, it's been my kind of dream since I started the city council. Um, we really need to create more, uh, we need to humanize our city staff from our clerk's office to DPW to the people that are running the sidewalk plows. So, um, you know, so at some point down the road, I, I would really love to see a uh, spotlight on Sanford staff, you know, and, and I attended a seminar where, um, the staff actually feel like there's a bias against them and that they're spoken badly of um, in their industry. You know, oh, you went to city government because you couldn't make it in private industry or along those lines. So I, at some point, I'd love to see uh, staff being highlighted and humanized. You mean like an employee of the week? Yeah. Like they do for the, um, the board membership on the um, uh, legacy. 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 Legacy, yeah, like that. Yeah, all our banks do a great job of it, doing staff highlights. Um, York County Shelter Program does it. There's a, quite a few organizations doing it, and it just really connects people to, people talk about the city all the time, but the city is people, right? And, and that's, the, I think, a misconnection. You know, one of the people who do the best posts are the Bangor Police Department. Their posts on potholes, I just want to keep stealing because, they're, you know, they're calling people out on their, like, the pothole thing. It's, it's like a fat, they're like, Potholes are a fact of life, people. Um, it's kind of funny. It's, you know, slow down. It's just nature. It's the way it is every year. And, you know, it's nobody's fault, really. And it's just, it's, it really helps. I've been, I point people towards that all the time. Anyway, I like those types of funny things. They also have the duck of justice. Yes, they right? do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> I think that sometimes government stuff is a little dry. They get tourists to the Duck of Justice. Yes. Yes. They do. Stop and have their picture taken with the Duck of Justice. Yeah. Right. We need exactly. a mascot, Jordan. <laughs> She'll just choose <laughs> Bruce or Boomer. It'll be easier. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, okay. I'm like, what were you saying? So back to kind of the local, like I said, that was what I have been mainly focusing on. And I think we've kind of like touched on this is I think the local is the human interest piece is it's humanizing the like the city. And I do think that a lot of people think of the city as this big machine and they don't think about all the individual people that make it up. And when I spoke to um, the police department, they were saying that they are trying to work on humanizing the shield and just kind of things like that that I think are really important because it's just easy to get sucked up in the, oh, it's the city. And I think that everyone works really hard, but it's just hard to see sometimes. So going back to the employee highlights, that is on my list and I was gonna do it um, every month. And so last month was Brady. And my thought is right now is to highlight the relatively newer positions. So highlight Brady, I did, I posted my article this month because I just didn't know how to interview myself for that. Um, and then I'm hoping to reach out to the police chief to kind of introduce him because he is fairly new. And I think that will be a great place to kind of open up dialogue. And after meeting with the police department, I was really blown away with how much they are doing there and how much has changed since Steve Anderson has started. And I just really think that a lot of our residents don't connect. Like, I think our residents support the police, but I don't think that they fully know if it's another aspect or another department that people don't know what it goes on there. So I think it's really important to overall just kind of humanize us all that work for the government. Um, and I think too, I mentioned, it goes back to the PR. I spoke with um, 
a PR professional at a kittery, and she was saying that she thinks that a lot of it goes back to just seeing those small little tidbits of positive news. It can break through the noise that you see so much on social media or going on. You go on the happening, you can see a lot of negative, but then you scroll down and you see another positive story and you read the article. Sometimes those are like what it takes to change someone's perception or change kind of the connotation of the city of Stanford. And I do think that we have plenty of positive stories to highlight, but it's just not getting sent to the right people. So that's kind of on something that I'm trying to focus on more after I start with the website and the survey is um, kind of live. And as I said, externally, I haven't done that much, but the quality of life, I think that kind of can play into the humanizing side. We're just playing up the positive aspects of Stanford. I think like the trails and the mainers and number one pond and how close we are to these things. If we just kind of highlight that more and that is kind of what I focus a little bit more towards Instagram. So I think that that is a better platform for posting that sort of news where when I look at the city of Portland's Instagram, they post all of their summaries of city council meetings and they post their agendas there. But I just don't think that that is where our residents are going to get their news about the city. And then the next goal, if you want to change it, Steve, is responsive representation. And so I felt too that this is obviously another kind of communication heavy goal that I could help the city council with. Um, and two, I felt like some of this goal was a great place to collaborate more with the growth council and some of the work that they are doing with making Stanford a more, um, a more uh, I think it was an economic destination and for more residential development I felt like that was a good place to collaborate with the growth council and I think one of the other things on the goals was a better communications with codes and I know that codes has been doing work with unicity so I think that some of the goals that are listed in the previous goal setting things are kind of being solved with a new website and some of the newer software that we are using. Jordan, don't you think that this goal also, but just by um, making our website more responsive and intuitive, that that will go a long way towards um, communicating better with all of our constituents? Yes, I think once we have a new website, that will be a big game changer because there's a lot of add-ons and widgets that we can do on the website that can increase communications with our residents that we just don't have right now. So it's kind of hard to really put them into words and say, oh, we need to do this more. But I know like one thing that we need to do, and I noticed it in the notes, was notifications to our residents. Current site, we have a data set of emails, but it's not easy to put the notifications out. But with Revise, you can do email and text, and those notifications can be formulated easy on the back end. So it's just things like that that we just don't even have access to them right now. That once we have the new site, it will make, I think it should make things a lot easier and increase communications overall. Anybody else have anything to add in this area? Well, on the business friendly part, could this be a, uh, a place where new businesses, um, we put on the website a picture of them with a ribbon cutting ceremony, or I always feel that for a PR piece, the more pictures we can put about stuff happening in Sanford, um, the better it is because people are curious and the more people we could include in those pictures, because people want to see, you know, what's going on. It's much better than words. So the more pictures we can use. And um, like uh, Mapes's uh, gas station that he just built. Um, you know, I haven't seen a whole lot, you know, on that. I don't know if it's appropriate for our webs, our um, city site or not, but I, I think that might be a part of the business friendly. Also, I want to make a comment. I'm in the process of building a pavilion down at Curtis Lake Church and like the one at the airport. 
And I went in to meet with Jamie and he was just delightful in taking me through the steps um, and help and letting me know what I needed to do next and stuff. So um, at least that part is really going well compared to what people had complained in the past. Uh, so it was a delight. So I thought I should let you know that, Steve. And I'm told Thanks he's for that. I'll, I'll, I'll pass that on to Jamie. Thank you. <laughs> and even when you're not a city counselor, I'm told he's delightful. He's all around. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear. So the only thing that I had on the, the business friendly that I, and, and I, those are great suggestions. Um, if we could also maybe link um, to the, some of the, you know, codes and, and whatever other departments would, would need to be involved with somebody that's interested in, in starting up a business in Sanford. Um, and I don't, you know, maybe, maybe a checklist of some sort, but, you know, that might be getting ahead of myself a little bit, but at least, um, you know, a few of the basic things on how to get, how to get started and um, where they need to go from there might be helpful. That, that's coming under the municipality program. Okay. Still, still working the still working the kinks out behind the scenes before we can you know kick that out and have you have the ability to go on define what it is you want to do on what particular lot and it starts to build out the uh, the listing for you to do you, do you need design review do you not do you need a site plan uh, what what do you need do you simply need a building permit and if so. Here's, here's what you need to fill out before you, you even come in or, or approach us for a building permit. So that that's all tied up in municipality right now. Okay. So maybe just a link to that would be great. Just so some people can easily find it, you know. This is all good. Yeah, I was actually just talking with Ian about that um, this afternoon just to make sure because I hadn't even thought about municity when making the new website so i have a note to see how that will if that will be a widget like a plug-in or if that will just redirect them to their page just so that we can have more information of what kind of what the site is going to be like once we're, we are live and i haven't read it but i think that the economic growth council has a small business guide that like i said that i think that the business friendly side is a great place to collaborate with the growth council and we could also link to their small business guide in that section and this will be in my notes about the website but one of my thoughts too for a website was to have a business like subheader section because i had been looking around at a few other cities and they have that so i felt like we could do that too to kind of drive home that focus that we are business friendly so that we can have those resources for businesses on the city site I think I'm beginning to realize how complicated all this really is. <laughs> I think that was, that was one of the harder parts is, is when I gave the starting list of, of the list of things, right, to, to Jordan when she first started was it was a realization that it was very difficult to put that list of things in an order of priority because virtually everything was broke or, or because it didn't exist, right? So that as you've discussed tonight, you know, it's difficult for Jordan to be pushing certain positive pieces of information. We can't steer you over to the website because we almost don't want you to look at the website right now because it it's broke, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> there's things that we have to hold off on and, uh, in, in, until until we get to those junctures. So yeah, it's it's been a whirlwind watching her just get control of the various outlets that we had previously that weren't being maintained or weren't properly uh, being managed or under control. And it's been very uplifting to to see the re, the amount of response that she's gotten in a short period of time using just just the social media aspects, and now starting to get out in the press release world to get more responses from the WGMEs. And I was really pleased that the Bangor Daily picked that up to get you know distribution outside of just the Portland Press Herald area. So because if if you're if you're not here, the Bangor Daily News really covers the the entire rest of the state. Uh, we just had a great article in Maine Biz, and, and um, uh, Growth Council pushed that out onto uh, the LinkedIn account and got over a thousand hits uh, pertaining to that story. So, 
it's, it's those elements of, that the city needs to do a better job with, and, and that's why we have Jordan here at this juncture. So, Right. And, you know, Steve, one of the things that, that concerns me is it, it, it's a lot of people think it's, it's just like one and done, but it isn't. This is, it, we need to keep up. We're, we're having a hard time now because we didn't keep up. And technology changes. Everything changes so quickly. So uh, that's my hope for this is that it's, we, that council, whatever council is sitting here um, in the next couple of years, that people need to understand it's not something you're going to just do once and then you can forget about it. It is an ongoing, um, it, it is an ongoing expense. It's an ongoing um, process to stay up to date if you want things to work the way they work in the rest of the world. Government is so slow to do that. And here we are, and that's why we're sitting here having to do all this, what I consider a lot more work than we would have if we had been able to keep up. So that's my hope for, for um, going forward, is that this is just the beginning, but it will ne this isn't a process that's going to end. I get that now. Jordan, can you talk to us some more? Uh, you, you brought this up, and I asked you to explain it then, and, and you did in the last council meeting when you were talking about uh, the selection for the new vendor for the website, how how we can get a better data set from from the public's use of our site to learn and be able to adapt that moving forward? Yeah. So I haven't looked at the data for our current site just because, I, like we've previously said, it's hard to find information. So I had, I think I looked at it once and it just didn't even seem right. So I'm just going to leave this. I just don't think that people are going to the right spot. But with our new site, we would work with Revise to, they've done this before, so they know more about how things should kind of be set up. But going forth, we could kind of use SEO, which is search engine optimization, to put in certain words or certain pictures, images, and things so that when people will Google search something, our site will pop up first that way. Or on our current site, or if someone is searching something on our site, if we provide accurate, relevant information and we don't have items from, say, 2005 coming up, we can then rely on our search to see if someone searches recycling, most people click the updated recycling do's and don'ts. Then we know that maybe our residents don't understand what you can put and you can't put in your recycling. And so I think it's things like that. It's like small questions that we can see the data of, oh, a lot of people are trying to see who do you contact for a building permit? Maybe we need to push more postings about the code team and the code enforcement and certain things like that, that once you kind of see where people are going on our website, we can, it, I imagine we could use it in unison with the survey to kind of create a more targeted communication approach. That format definitely needs to be um, mobile device friendly. Seldom do I do I ever sit in front of a computer for anything I need to do for myself personally. I pull the phone off off my belt, and that's that's it. Everything's done on that phone. And so that being said, when everyone looks at the website, I would recommend looking at them on your computer and on your phone so you can kind of see the differences between how the websites act and where certain things are. And then you can say, oh, I like how, say, St. Pete looks on the phone, but I don't like how Olympia, Washington looks on the phone. I don't like this aspect. So you can kind of really, if it's going to be fully custom, then I want it to be something that we like. And it's, I don't want there to be, oh, this problem, like now's the time to get these problems kind of figured out. So I'd rather kind of let us have a, well-rounded view of what we want when we go in to, like the design meeting. So I think too that will make shorten up the timeline kind of if we know what we want rather than us sitting in the meeting being like well this would be nice or this would be nice or what about this if we have a more succinct idea I think that it should help kind of optimize the process. I must say I'm quite impressed with our the fact that our website does the GIS so well because I can use that GIS on my phone and I've, I've because I know how bad our website is, I'm I'm pleased with that piece of it. That's a separate, that's an external, we're going to external location with that. 
All right, that's a separate hosted solution that's that's why that they do very long. well. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is the place or the spot to say this, but um, when we talk about our image, both internally and externally, um, a lot of the positive, amazing things going on in our community are um, through, you know, partner organizations, nonprofits, um, place, you know, things like the Chamber, Friends of Downtown. You know, Becky mentioned the um, something fun happening at Curtis Lake Church. Is there a method or will there be a method, Jordan, uh, or a vehicle for which um, non-city departments can submit events or blurbs to you that might be able to, you could decide, obviously not everything would make the cut, but you could decide on what might be appropriate to share through the city, um, Facebook or whatever, whatever platform makes sense. Will there be a way to get that information to you from those organizations to share some of the positive, awesome stuff happening? Um. That has never like come up. It hasn't really crossed my mind. But now that you say that, it's definitely something that I would like to do because we recently shared something. Or Larissa had sent it to me about the backpack program, like a one hundred thousand pound food giveaway. And so I think that now that you say that, I would like to kind of figure out something like that because Steve and I have talked about and Larissa have talked about kind of creating that sense of community in Sanford and using our Facebook page or kind of using our stuff to help foster that. And it obviously starts with us, like sharing events that are in town and the city, we can share stuff that we do, but at some point we have to share stuff that's not just solely operated by the city. So I will check out something for that. Um, can I ask a question about that, Jordan? Yeah. Was there was there a reason why when you shared that thing about that program that you didn't use the logo for the Sanford backpack program or the logo that I mean I'm because it was a different logo than I had seen on the original sh shared page. For the because backpack a lot of the, one, sorry. Well, yeah, I'm trying to remember what it was. It wasn't the one do you know what I'm talking about, Ann? No, I was, just, shared, I was just pulling it was up a different logo. And a lot of these, like, especially the backpack program or the one that was for the, um, the church, the, the, um, I can't remember what it was, but it looked like you used a different logo. And I just wondered if there was a reason for that. And maybe it was just that you felt like I'll look it up and I'll send and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send it to you. But I just, I, I just, the only thing, problem that I have is I would hope that if somebody like a group like that, whether it's Gramtastic or um, the Backpack Program or any of these um, groups that are nonprofit strategies, and you were sharing them, that they would be shared with their logo. We could put ours, but you wouldn't, you know, mess around with it. I can't imagine you have enough time to really do that. But Yeah, so it's I think what happened sense. to that, I was just sent the information about Maybe. the event it just uh who what when where oh, okay. and then i just took that to create the graphic that was fun yeah, i, I was just wondered say, why that was different. i forwarded it from the acton um what's up in acton facebook page which is where i saw it so it might not have had all of the information that you had seen on a different version Oh, great. I just wondered why that was different. That, thank you for that explanation. I appreciate it. Bob, did we lose you for a while? A little bit in the beginning. I, I've, been a, I've been here most of the time, but um, yeah. Oh, okay, uh, I was on my phone for a while, uh, and then I was able to switch back. I just haven't heard from you, and this is all your stuff, computer stuff, so. Well, I'm listening. I mean, everything sounds great, you know. I mean, yeah. um, you know, it, it, there's there's, uh, there's a lot of stuff here. I mean, the, the one thing that comes to mind, I'm a little hesitant to uh, to mention it, but um, you know, they say uh, apps are the new website. So um, uh, I'm just wondering, uh, put a put a bug maybe in uh, Jordan's ear that um, it, you know it. It can be done. I don't know what the cost is that's associated with it, but you make an app that goes on your your phone or mobile device. You tap the app, and it, <clears throat> it can bring you right into uh, the website or um, you know other other resources. Uh, and uh, I, I, you know, 
So uh, that's something that uh, as you go through this, and uh, I don't think any of us have the the answer to, you know, how do we communicate all this stuff? Um, I call it taking, uh, it's probably not politically appropriate, but uh, a shotgun approach to this. You just kind of shoot it out everywhere and, and uh, see, see what happens. And, and uh, there, there's no right or wrong way uh, to do this. But <clears throat> tracking the data that, uh, that Jordan's doing and things like that is going to give us some strong hints as to what people are interested in and uh, uh, how they're receiving their information, what's their... Twitter hasn't been mentioned at all uh, this evening. I don't know whether, um, you, you know, that's, that's something, uh, you know, I, when I, when I uh, was more involved with Facebook, you used to be able to do a Facebook post and it automatically went out through your Twitter account at the same time. So it wasn't double the work. Uh, it was just, um, you know, when you posted something on Facebook, it also went out to Twitter. So Again, people who follow you on Twitter had links to the same information that was on your uh, on your your Facebook page. So the, I I'm sure Jordan's aware of stuff like that that's been around for a long time. And uh, um, but you know the more stuff we can do that, the more bases we can touch. And there's always going to be new bases, right? So <clears throat> uh, you know, and and, and uh, so it's going to, as the mayor said, uh, evolve and change over time. <clears throat> and the the management of the data to keeping that up to up to date is always is, the website is just a huge database so it's only as good as the um, the accuracy of the data that's in your uh, in your database so that's that's the way to think of the website but otherwise uh, everything that I've seen um, top notch professional quality well done. Uh, well written, um, on the on the mark, uh, communication on the spot, whatever uh, kind of communication. You know what what currently is going on. There's information about it, and so uh, I'm I'm so far, and uh, I'm very pleased with with uh, the conversation and what I've seen. So, you asked the question, Mayor. Now you got the answer. Well, just figured we should hear from you. So yeah. we were finished. And yeah. I just wanted to say one thing, Jordan. I really love the idea of a yearly satisfaction survey. I, I think that it helps elected officials know how if, we all expect complaints, but sometimes in those satisfaction surveys, you actually hear some good stuff. And I think it would be really helpful. Yeah, I agree. I think it's hard because we this hasn't been done before, so it's hard to know where we are. And I think that you can just go on Facebook and see a, a million complaints. So then sometimes it's hard, but it seems like maybe the negatives can outweigh the positives. But then you go on to the happening, and then sometimes I click and you find these really good posts about everyone sharing their favorite pit place to eat pizza, and it has 100 comments of everyone supporting like small businesses in town. So and I think that overall, it just comes down to that our residents are passionate about where they live and they are passionate about their city. And I think there is a lot of pride in Sanford that people have, but sometimes they just feel that it's not how they envision their city to be. And so I think that the survey would be nice to just kind of see, well, what are what do people like? And it would give us a way to inform, okay, people like these certain programs or they like this aspect of it. And then we can play out more into those things. And going off to the communications part of it too, it's like the satisfaction of, I wanna see what people think about our website right now. And then once you go live, like what do people think about the live website? Cause that will be a good gauge of, I envision people being happy, but who knows, maybe I was wrong about the whole thing and everyone, all the residents love the website, how it is. I can't imagine <laughs> yeah, it would be- They thing, don't, but... I can tell you right now, they don't- Nobody like likes the website as it is. <laughs> Do you remember we had a post one time and somebody on Facebook wanted to know if you could camp overnight on city property and you wanted to know, you asked me where it was and I go, well, let me figure it out and tried like heck. And finally it was under loitering. Yeah, I, like, couldn't I think it. there are people who don't even know the word loitering. Yeah. yeah. It was ridiculous. I mean, I knew we couldn't do it. I knew it wasn't allowed, <laughs> but try to find it. But that was, 
so no, they don't like the site. Nobody does. Before um, before we get too far down the road with Jordan working on the, the branding piece, I don't know if this is the appropriate time or a later meeting, but um, I don't want a situation where we're like at Pride Elementary where we have a blue entrance and we really wanted red. And I'm not saying that that's the, the end result here, but is is there any thoughts on, on colors as we head into rebranding? I just want to bring that up early versus late. Well, can you tell me, did you guys do some work on this rebranding like before? Because I'm not even aware of what rebranding we did, I guess. Because it hasn't happened over the last year, correct? It happened at the growth council level. And that's the problem. It happened at the growth council level, Avery. Oh, so I don't know anything about it. Can you tell and at the growth And at the growth council level, uh, the branding went from the, t so here, here's the history. So uh, when the marketing piece first went out, the first round of, of funding went out in, in the form of $100,000. Um, they hired Dietz Marketing out of Kenny Mount, incredible firm that, that prior to that had done wonderful things for the city, was going down that path of doing more wonderful things for the city, and Mr. Dietz, Tim, passed away. The company dissolved within a couple of months. So we picked up on that, the work product that they had started. Uh, ended up with a contract with Keneally and Associates, uh, who does an exceptionally great job on video productions, and, and I'll leave it leave it at that. So the the the, <clears throat> the new brand, the cityscape that we have out there, was was formed by Tim Tim Dietz uh, and and the whole vision for it. Subsequent to that, if they started to break it up. So taking snippets, 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 snippets was driving me in. Saying, and one of the first things I said to Jordan when she came on board is, who the heck takes a, a brand, a company's brand, and then breaks it into pieces and thinks that that's an acceptable uh, form of marketing? So, so from that uh, has been the um, envelopment of that, that branding, that work that Tim Dietz had done. Growth Council took that. They took the brand, they put it out there as it was supposed to be, and they purchased a brand new website and did all of that work for the Growth Council, and the city sits over here with, with nothing on our side of the equation. So council's take, taking their hands on that. The marketing, house, uh, marketing funds has come back in-house. We've got a communications coordinator now, and we're setting about building our own website. So, um, so let me go back to it. What happens to that brand, though? So... Yeah, so, so Jordan has done a significant amount of work with, with the, the Dietz product as far as the brand and how that can be incorporated into the city's websites. We have that compliancy and don't lose that, that, that momentum. So, Ann, did you have some something to say about that brand? Because I'm, to be honest with you, Steve, I'm, I couldn't, I probably have seen it on Road County stuff, it. but it didn't register. Weren't you on the growth council for a year? <laughs> but no. Yeah, but honestly, it wasn't on anything that I saw hardly at all. I think primarily you know, it, it's blue. It's a lovely blue. So I, I again, my, my point is just is, is from a branding standpoint, and a lot of us are alumni, and, and so I have a hard time. When I think of Stanford, I'm old school. I think of red and white. Um, I still wear red and white on Fridays and to games. And um, so when I think Stanford, I think red but we were shifting towards a blue color, at least at the growth council level. Um, Kenny Bunk's blue. And, you know, I, I think that um, I, anyway, and we landed with blue on our elementary school. So anyway, I, I just want to get an idea before we head, and that's maybe an easy fix, but if, if nobody has an attachment to color, then great, we don't have to worry about it. If there is an attachment, I just want Jordan to know now, not in blue. the forecast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm looking at it now. It's a big circle with uh, like no. a mill in it. No, Jordan, do you have anything available to, to pull up on mm -hmm. on the computer and and or Larissa? I mean, uh, while you're looking for that, I have started to use the new city letterhead uh, that uses uh, a rendition of this. Fan this out for you. So the, the Tim Dietz development is the whole the whole uh, cityscape. You could 
trees, you've got the residential units, you've got the industrialization, uh, you've got the farm farmland with the farm and the fields in it, you've got our water resources and our tree, trees to get to the recreational aspect of it, and you've got the river that flows through our community uh, being the Mousam River. Then what was done was they were like drawing a circle and splitting this out and then splitting out the mills and splitting out the farmland and the spreading out, splitting out the recreational piece. Nobody takes a logo and then just chops it all into pieces and thinks that that's going to be recognizable to, to the, uh, the people you're trying to reach. Mm -hmm. I just said everybody, the growth council, um, JPEG or GIF. But, and I agree, Steve, too, in that chop up is weird to me as well. Just like, just like I ought to say, I didn't like the squish in different colors either. That always confused me. <laughs> but I know there was a rhyme and reason to it, but um, I didn't like that inconsistency. So can I just ask, so I'm going to be honest with you, Steve, even showing me that I could barely see that skate behind. And clearly it didn't register on me when I'd seen it as any kind of a logo. I'm just saying that I don't, it didn't come through. That wasn't what the Growth Council's been using on their newsletters. Now that I like. I don't guess I don't, what color would you pick besides blue, Anne? No, and I'm not necessarily saying, um, you know, I think red can be harsh and, and blue is not necessarily a bad fit. I just want to have that conversation after learning from my experience in the core building committee that color oh, yeah. issue and be costly if not discussed really. So. I, I just want to comment. I think you could get the right shade of red uh, in that. I mean, I think we all know Sanford's colors are basically red and white. Um, and black. But I, I, you know, I, I think you could, you could probably get the right shade of red in that in the background, so that it wasn't too uh, uh, in your eyes or too bright or whatever it might be. But just my opinion. I actually like you want that. me to, to to share the the circle logo that you. I sent that in on? the chat, Larissa, but you can easier for oh, okay. you to share. So one of our concerns was with the breaking up of the pieces. And so we asked Jordan if there was a way she could come up with a logo that would be able to be in, a, in one area, but incorporate the whole, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. This is one of the ideas that she came up with. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. the, the addition of the airplane? Yep. Right there. Yes, I like it. Not your idea, Steve. No, <laughs> no not my idea. No. So would you that to a, 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 a red color, or do you leave it? So I, you know, it's it's say, again to me, Sanford's red, and I don't know if that's old school. Kenny Bunks blue, Massachusetts, you know, um, uh, Waterboro's green. You know, so I, I think of it in that sense. But again, that maybe is old school. Um, so I, that's why I'm asking the question of others. Could we um, play around with the colors a little bit, Steve? Do you think that would be possible and just let us take a look at it? Because I kind of agree with, um, I mean, I like it. I'm not, I didn't go to Stanford High School, but I, you know, two kids went here, it was always red and white and black. So to me, it's not just red and white, it's red, white, and black. But it would be nice to... Um, Maybe the I don't mind the blue even, you know, I gotta tell you, even if there was just a splash, you'd change your future is here to red or something. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be the whole thing. In my opinion, because I, I don't, I'm not a big rah rah shish boom ba. I could care less about the colors. So <laughs> I'm trying to be helpful. <laughs> maybe it's just that Anne's still closer to high school than we are. Uh, maybe. I, it's just, it's always been me, though. I've never been like that. Jordan, you're the closest to graduation. I mean, what, what are your, when you think of Sanford and a color associated with it, what do you think of? Yeah. I, I'm kind of with him. I'm kind of with him on think, this. Red's a horrible you color. You are, Bob? I think <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 think, I think it should be. I, I mean, I'm not trying to create a lot of extra work 
for anybody, but I, I think you bring up black as a color now. Yeah, now you got red, white, and black you could work with uh, on that. I think, you know, you could do uh, black on the outside, a little red on the inside, right. different red lettering and uh, or black lettering, uh, you know, something. I, I think it's worth playing around with a little bit. And, and uh, I, the, the blue looks great, but I, I think, as it's been pointed out, you know, they're, they're not Sanford's colors. So. And if you think about like a Pride parade even, and we're carrying a Sanford banner, right, as city council on the front, and it's all logoed in blue, and then all of our, you know, band is in red, I, I just feel like it's slightly disjointed. I think but. you're right, Ann. Did anybody bring this up, though, when it happened with the World Council, or does the World Council just see themselves as not part of the city of Sanford? Oh. I'll say that Mayor Cody liked blue a lot. And then that's, I'll leave it there to comment further. Gotcha. I think as well that Tim Dietz was so charismatic and his vision was so um, beautifully presented that I think it was very easy to be sort of carried okay. along with, with, his, with his idea. Um, I think when he passed away, like the the final piece of that vision sort of got lost a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna work on the colors then, right, Steve and Jordan? Is that okay? And we'll have so a I'll play around with on. some colors, and I'll send some different iterations over and see what everyone thinks. Sounds like a plan. What else would so, you uh, Yeah, so what, el what else would you like to discuss and, and or accomplish this evening? <clears throat> I did want to talk a little bit about, I don't know if it's appropriate now, but um, and maybe we can do it in that context, but the one big marketing thing that we're probably going to have to do is the fire station thing, and I just wanted to make sure that we left time for our communications person to help us. Uh, do the work that we need to do. I think that 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 for me is is going to be an important piece of what you're going to be helping us with in the next um, six months to a year. I think if you go back and if you review the, uh, the four major communications that she put out around uh, using the uh, firefighter cancer awareness month uh, as the as the basis for putting that out, it was about developing a common language. Right, so that we can have that when you go forward with further educational materials, you know, everything Jordan did with that was designed around building that common language between, you know, uh, a hot, cold, and, and, and a um, uh, red, yellow, and green zone for our departments, what it means as far as cancer uh, causes and, and uh, cancer causes, what we have in our current facilities, what we don't have in our facilities, and why we can't achieve that. That language was started. We started to build that language, so that it's easier to to go forward in a public education campaign. Because I know that uh, as I've talked with uh, about fiber resources and what, what's going on with solar in the city and such under that, I used to get invited pre-COVID to a lot of different formats to go out and discuss that and and, and talk with other communities about what Sanford was doing and such. I absolutely paused and stopped in that pre 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 the crash down of, of COVID because I was speaking a different language. The others weren't there yet. They hadn't caught up to that. And it was very difficult to go back, speak in a language where, whereby you know, they, they just weren't there. So we just paused. So that that was Jordan's initial work with the fire aspect of this was getting us to the point that we can talk about the, the commonalities using the same language. And when Ian did the survey work for us originally, what an amazement you know, before and after on the PSA development and such under that, it, it did not take a, a significant, you know, expenditure of resources or a significant amount of time in, in putting forward education to see the major difference in the survey work in that short period of time. So I see that's one of the most valuable aspects of having Jordan's position here, having Jordan uh, do, do what she does well, 
Uh, so let's you know find out with a starting survey where people are getting their communications from, what 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 they're not getting, what they like to have. That that really is a good starting basis so that we can shift shift focus a, as needed with Jordan's position on, on how best to reach that wide wide demographic. And, and another thing that I greatly appreciate about uh, what Jordan brings to the table and her age demographic is that mm-hmm. when you think about, you know, we, we have, you know, God love our, our memes and pepes here, right? But, they, but, um, but it's that young family demographic that we need to attract into Sanford that we want. They want, they want to be here because of our schools, uh, as people move out of their homes and into the availability of high quality uh, rental units that they can be in the, in their retirement years. We need to backfill those with with great families that will want to be here and support that part of our taxable base and partake of the services that the city has invested so heavily in. So I think we've got a good blend of that. My, my primary concern at this point in time is how to reach that oldest demographic that was mo- most reliant upon that printed newspaper coming to their their mailbox, their home, their home delivery every day. How do we better reach them? Because that went away. Yeah, I think she's done a good job um, with that beginning process, but it's going to be not. It, it's still going to be um, high on the list of communicating what we're going to do, especially when we when we go to bond. And we go to vote. I just think, and and that's why I'm glad that the website will be done. And I think we'll be well on our way to communicating more appropriately and efficiently with the with with our, our residents. Um, have you? Uh, the only other thing I wanted to ask is that survey. Is there what your timeline is with the survey? When it when you think it will go out? And have you thought about maybe um, using part of the um, the school department? Even though, like their their um, email list or their tech, I don't know how they how they work on that side, but maybe that's something we could talk about with um, Matt because that is a good avenue for um, sharing information or putting out a survey that more people will respond to. So, so yeah, go go ahead, Jordan. As far as the timeline, I. I'm waiting until I have a paper survey distribution plan before I go live with that. So that is something that hopefully will be figured out soon because the online version. I missed that. She's frozen. Um, as... Oh, am I unfrozen? Yeah, we lost you for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Can you repeat what you said? Sorry. Okay, yeah. Thanks. So as far as the timeline, Till I have a paper survey distribution plan so it's ready to go out to um, all avenues because Zendel at the Stanford Springville News had reached out to me and I felt like she was a good contact at some of the 55 plus generation that might not be always um, online. And then actually on Friday I had met with Steve and Matt Nelson. That was my first Um, introduction to him and we were talking about the data set that they have with their emails but it didn't come up about the survey but I'm happy that you brought that up because I hadn't thought about it and I think that that would be a great resource especially for that younger those younger or not even younger but I guess parents people that have an invested stake in the town because their kids go to school here. And I'd recommend less the email messaging and more the text messaging feature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One, one thing I, I'm sitting here listening and thinking, uh, I've seen a rise uh, in the use of QR codes, and of course, they've been around for a while. Uh, and it used to be, uh, you used to have to download an app that was a QR reader and all this kind of stuff. Apparently, now you just hold your phone up to it and the QR reader is built into your phone if you have your camera on. So it's really simple. Uh, to do. And if we watch the Olympics, those of us that or watch TV, you see you can hold it up to your TV screen now even and get uh, a schedule for the for the Olympics and things like that. So it, it seems to be making a comeback. I think the fact that it's built into the technology now makes it even simpler. 
uh, people don't need an app. Uh, and so it's, it's popularity is rising. So I, I just wanted to, to point that out, um, that, that maybe it's something we can, we can take, uh, uh, advantage of, uh, I mean, you can put that in print media, you can put it on websites, you can put it on handouts, paper handouts that you stick on a wall, whatever you want to do. And if, and if people are interested, then they scan it, right? If they're not interested, they don't scan it. So we're not interrupting somebody's life by throwing something in their face. If they want more information, it's there. So uh, just a thought. QR code a, uh, to print out them like a URL or something along serving the monkey at backslash all those. I think that was a good idea. Too. So Jordan and I met last Friday with Matt Nelson as the school is, is really starting in earnest now discussing to have a parallel position in the school department um, for, ob for obvious reasons. And we also discussed the, um, the communications tool that they use to post notices to parents, you know, for school closings, change of schedule, th things of that nature. Uh, that's been a very guarded resource, and I absolutely understand why it's a guarded resource no different than they don't allow just anything for paper to come in and stuff it in the kids' backpacks when they go home and such into that. So there's a lot of things that we have to feel out going forward in the future, as, as, you know, that cross-marketing, that cross-communications, using the different formats. For us, like like MyRec is one of that, that format. So the school has, has theirs. We have MyRec in the, in the Parks and Recreation Department. So we, we're going to have to feel our way out in doing those cross communications as to how best to, to achieve that. Uh, and I'm very pleased to, to know that the school department is starting that discussion in earnest uh, to have a communications coordinator as well. Great. There hasn't been any discussion about SRTV tonight. I mean, you bring up the schools. I don't know what the relationship's gonna be between Jordan and WSRTV, uh, if any. Because uh, I mean that that also seems like a no-brainer as a way to reach some of the more elderly people in this community, also. So we did talk uh, just briefly that you know on the city side, we we aspire to be able to do all of our PSA work using WSSR TV and and their you know one person staff at this point in time. We yeah. realize the limitations, yeah. but it would sure. be nice if there's another staff person there. Uh, so that when we spend the limited resources that we're going to have to develop PSAs and such under that, they're produced there, and the students get that that hands-on real-life experience uh, and such. We've we've had um, no issues working with WSSR our TV as far as getting information shared and such under that. It's, it's really the staffing limitations that they're they're up right. against right now. Right. Well, and I and I know. Uh, it's not a good solution necessarily because it costs money, but I mean, maybe we need to pay somebody to make, uh, you know, some of the PSAs and, and have uh, students or city employees or whatever, make the other PSAs with, with the help, you know, the students can do the filming. You could have the uh, city employees be the actors or whatever, or the city council for all that matters. You know, um, <laughs> we're, we're a humorous group, you know, so we, we do well in the entertainment business. But anyways, you know, uh, stuff like that, I, I think, and, it, you know, and it's apparently it runs on YouTube now. And, uh, you know, so it so it's there. Maybe, again, thinking of the website and an app or something like that, it can uh, encapsulate uh, the WSSR TV uh, plainly in the website uh, also, in the city's website, not just uh, on the school side. <clears throat> Okay. Have we covered pretty much everything we wanted to cover this evening, Steve? I, I believe we have. I thought it was important as part of this workshop to for the council to have a better understanding of where Jordan has focused uh, on on the start and, and where where that direction is going in the future. And a lot of this really now is is dependent upon restructuring and rebuilding the city's website is, is part of that that large piece 
you know, I've also talked with Jordan uh, for a lot of the, the Facebook information that she's had out there and such and of that to start converting those simultaneously to press releases and pushing those out to take advantage of the free coverage <clears throat> from our TV stations and, 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 and other newspapers that are out there. Anybody have anything else they want to talk about or ask Jordan? Jordan, anything you want to add? I feel like we covered pretty much everything that I had on my end, but does anyone have any questions of me? Don't see any hands up. Nope. Well, I think we can um, finish a little earlier than I thought we would. If everyone's okay with that. All right, we'll see you all next Tuesday at our regular council meeting. Sounds good. Bye. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks, Jordan. Bye. Good night. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. Thank you.